Hey Madison, great to see you again. How are you doing? Good, how about you? I'm doing just great. Um, Madison, congratulations on being our, dis our district's first Global Grant Scholar. Uh, it's such an accomplishment. Thank you. Yeah, it, it's such a great honor to have been selected. The, uh, so I know you've lived in our area the, your entire life. I know you graduated Rutgers in three years and were, were valedictorian of your class. And uh, you've done so much great work and President Obama highlighted you in the Rutgers commencement speech. Tell me more about it. Yeah, sure. So all of my work has really focused around research and advocacy in the global AIDS response. For many years, I ran a nonprofit organization called GlobeMed, which has a really exciting model in reframing the way that university students engage in global health. Most of my contributions, I think, has really been through research and really trying to put activism at the forefront of academic literature. So much of activism is thought of as just protests in the streets and just holding governments accountable. But I think that the most a way that we can really reshape it is by us putting activism in literature. In particular, one of the biggest projects that I've worked on in my time has been an evaluation of the U.S. government. In particular, their the largest bilateral program for AIDS funding. Uh, so in the U.S., it's the U.S. President's Emergency Plan for AIDS. Mm -hmm. really. One of the main projects that I did was to do a policy evaluation looking at the landscape in Sub-Saharan Africa and India, where we were looking at elimination of mother-to-child transmission for HIV and the, pol the policy landscape to support a new and innovative treatment method called Option B+. What's the work that needs to be done to end AIDS? I think there's two, two main pieces that need to be addressed. One is the role of young people. Young people have such passion and energy to get involved in, be a part of social justice issues, but the piece that's always criticized is that young people need to harness that potential, that it isn't harnessed, it's just kind of floating around. And the way that I've tried to work to address that has been my work in Australia, where I worked with the Melbourne Youth Force which is an international coalition of young people from around the world working to create a unified youth advocacy agenda. And we did this creating a, a youth action plan for two years. We've structured all of our campaigns around the world around these four key themes, treat, reform, educate, and love. Do we need to provide treatment without discrimination? We need to reform discriminatory and harsh trading policies that we need comprehensive sex education. And most importantly, we need love. We need to end the stigma around HIV and reduce homophobia and transphobia. All of this together, we see a huge impact in putting youth at the center of the AIDS response. And this is so, so critical. If we do address AIDS now, we can see such a huge economic boom for the region. That said, though, if we don't address it, we can see a huge resurgence, not just in that region, but globally, even here in the United States, we still have an epidemic where black gay men have a one in two lifetime risk of contracting HIV. So AIDS is far from over in our country. And if we really want to end it globally, we need increased investments and we need to reframe the way that we talk about HIV. It's not just a biological illness, it's the violation of human rights. And that we need to be looking at HIV in this political economy approach in order to really end the epidemic. I mean, we're not just looking at HIV specifically. We're looking at the factors that that enable HIV to flourish, like violence and how poor health care and poor housing. All of this together, it's not just HIV specific. If we address those issues that impact HIV in this macro scale, we can see a huge health impact across the board. It would improve peace and security throughout the world. It would just have such a, a wide impact. So while my work looks at HIV as an indicator, it's really almost a, a proxy for inequality, a stand-in for inequality, that we look at it as inequality and by reducing inequality through these macro level forces, we can drive down HIV rates and, and other diseases. Madison, why Oxford? When I first started looking at graduate school, I started thinking about doing a master's of public health, which is the field that I did my undergraduate in. But Rutgers is ranked fourth in the nation for public health. So I really had a, a premier graduate level, essentially, education in public health. And it's really important to be in a country like England or where the right to health is paramount to the government. It's so important to be in that environment, to frame that conversation 
and that's what that's what brought me to look at the UK but Oxford specifically has such a unique approach at looking at policy it's not just looking at the impact or the implications but it's looking at the the full spectrum from conceptualization and objective setting to how ideologies fit in and that by looking at policy in this life cycle approach we can see such new ideas come from it and I think this will be so helpful as I work in my PhD to look at the impact of political structures on HIV risk for marginalized populations and how we can work in this political economy approach to really end AIDS. Wow, Madison Little is the real deal. What an opportunity that we as Rotarians have to help support this young man as he makes an impact on the world. Madison's work perfectly aligns with what we do every day as Rotarians. Moreover, it aligns with three of the Rotary Foundation's areas of focus. Maternal and child health, disease prevention and treatment, and economic and community development. We need your club's financial support to help fund this Rotary Foundation Global Grant Scholarship. Madison Scholarship is for three years for his PhD at Oxford at $58,000 per year. Right now, our district governor has already contributed $10,000 of district designated funds, which are, which are matched at 100% by the Rotary Foundation. Your club and my club's financial support is matched at a 50% level by the Rotary Foundation. Lastly, as part of this global grant, Madison has committed to a lifelong relationship with Rotary. Moreover, it's my personal opinion that you're looking at a Rotary International President someday in the future. Please support Madison Little.